Hi everybody, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers and I'm really excited to be here today with Danny Cuff who is Customer Services Director at Gipping Press. Hi Danny, lovely to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you too. Right, so first of all tell us a bit about Gipping Press and what you do. Okay, so we're a printing company based in Needham Market um, right. in the centre of Suffolk. Um, the company's been established since 1980, so well over 40 years now. Wow. Um, and we, under our roof, we handle everything from the initial design and concept um, for printed products, right through the printing, the finishing, and then dispatching. We also handle direct mailing, so that can be sending the printed products direct oh, through right. people's doorsteps. Um, so really, everything between in that whole stage happens under our roof here. Gosh, that is like that's quite a lot of things that happen all in one place. What sort of what sort of things do you print? Do you print on paper? Yes. So traditionally, it's been anything that can be printed on paper. Mm -hmm. um, in the past sort of five six years, we've started to add things to that, um, such as we do a lot of signage. That's both oh, right. external um, or internal exhibition displays, um, all that type of stuff. Um, and also we're getting into recently thick promotional items. So oh, things wow. such as clothing um, or putting logos. Really, if a logo can go somewhere, uh, we're, we're investigating a way to be involved in that. <laughs> That's a fantastic <laughs> attitude to have, especially like I think business <laughs> diversification is so important, isn't it? But yeah. with all these different things happening, I guess you have different people doing different jobs within your company. Would you tell us a bit about what those different jobs are? Yeah, absolutely. So we are still a relatively uh, small company. So everyone does have their specialist area, um, but everyone sort of interchanges. Um, right. We, it, when one department's busier than another, for example, we may shuffle people around to help yeah. with that. Um, but yeah, so from the initial outlay, we have um, admin. So um, handling things such as new customer inquiries, existing okay. customer inquiries, um, quoting um, through to the invoicing stage and chasing late payments, things like that. Um, and then into the print side, we have two people in our design studio um, who are doing a lot of pre-press design work, checking of people's files, um, making sure that they will print as to give them the best end product really that's what we do a lot of in that studio um, and then from there we've got digital print which has an operative right. um, which is really anything that has less than a thousand copies printed so that has its own set of printing presses and procedures um, and then we've got litho which is a thousand copies up which is the more traditional way of printing was done which again has its own has its own uh, own concepts and things to go with that and then yeah. after that they go through to finishing uh, which is lots of different finishing equipment to make things into booklets to trim things to size hand finishing um, so yeah there's lots there and then on the large format and exhibition size side yeah. um, that has its own different printing press and um, with its own different procedures and its own different finishings that are applied um, so as I say, staff do have their own specialist area here, but we try to encourage as many people as possible to, to know how to do many different aspects for things such as holiday cover. Um, yeah. And also when areas get busy, really. I'm guessing sort of me just sort of picking out on different areas that you've talked about. I guess the designers probably have a specific set of skills with how they do things. What what sort of skills do they have, Danny? So, um one of the designers, Jonathan, is a fellow director. He's been involved uh, in design his whole career. Um, so we've also then got Joe, who joined us as an apprentice, probably right. getting on for five years ago now. Um, oh, wow, brilliant. So, yeah, between those two, they can cover quite a wide field from real creative concept creation uh, through to uh, checking of people's files and making sure that they'll be okay. Um, it's quite common now for people to to want to use their desktop equipment yeah. to, to design something at home, which we encourage. Nothing wrong with that. Um, we just like to give everything a bit of a pre-flight check um, with our, with the guys in the studio there. Um, so it's really anything between those. But 
in terms of qualifications, we tend to like to mould our staff yeah. to how we operate. We're a bit unique um, because of our size and because of what we do. So it's quite helpful for us to bring in somebody um, at the start of their career and then we yeah. can sort of mould them and get, give them the qualifications that they need to work here, really. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's a great approach in terms of like, you know, sort of how to grow your business. What sort of skills, what are you looking for then, like from people who may be interested in coming to work for you? What sort of thing makes you think, yes, they'll work for us? Yes. The main thing, to be honest, is to be a team player. Um, yeah. That is, that's more important than anything, really. Um, qualifications, yes, they're important, but we place more emphasis on their character and how they'd fit in the team dynamic here. Um, we are quite a strong team, um, so it is important uh, that we don't upset that by bringing in the wrong character um, and that someone comes in who understands that, uh, that you will be expected to be part of a team and perhaps do things which aren't just your specialist area. Um, so that's primarily what we look for, yeah. um, in, to be honest. And that sort of flexibility, I guess, like you say, yes. to be prepared to sort of and perhaps like the, the courage to give something different a go. Yes, exactly that. Yeah, exactly. And with the what sort of what is the working environment like? I mean, I, I've, I've never I've never been in a printer's. So it's just struck me here, whereas lots of people I speak to have been in their working environments. And um, yeah, what what sort of the working environment like on the floor with the presses and things like that? How does that yeah. look? How does that feel like for okay. somebody thinking about a career? So. So the design and admin stuff, we're upstairs. Um, our atmosphere is a little bit quieter because we need to be on the phones or designers need to be concentrating um, yeah. a bit more. So that's that's more of a typical office environment yeah. setup. Um, but then the print floor can be quite noisy. You've got very big pieces of equipment um, weighing several tons. Um, wow. It's part of the reason we can't really move from where we are because yeah. you can't get out <laughs> the building. Um, so, yeah, there's there's different different environments and again it's quite quite noisy in the in the finishing department as well um so there's lots going on lots of different environments but what's quite nice um when joe joined us we had had this chat this it's quite rare now to have design and print in one company um yeah. just the way that the industry's gone so it's quite nice for those guys and that they can be design something come up with a concept and then they could walk throughout our whole factory floor and see it progressing from a plain sheet of paper to some a big sheet with print on it, then trim down to coming up as a finished product, whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, that's so they get quite to see rewarding. The end result. Yes, exactly. And every stage in between, um, which is quite rewarding, actually. Wow, I bet it is. I bet that's really great seeing an idea and seeing that really come to life. And then there it is printed on anything that it can be printed on from the sound. Yes, of it. exactly. And yeah. I was wondering as well if whether like for the more hands on stuff like actually sort of doing the actual printing and especially maybe for the hand finishing and the finishing part. Do you need good kind of dexterity, good manual skills? Do you have to be good with your hands to be able to do things like the finishing? You yes, you do really, because um, there is such a wide, a wide variety of things that you'll be doing just in finishing. So you, you could be um doing trimming which is going to involve picking up large sheets in fairly large batches and transporting those around um so yes there's a lot of equipment which does does some of the processes for you but not everything so the hand yeah. finishing is something that you do have to be taught um the best way of doing things um there isn't necessarily a quick way of doing some of the processes they are quite yeah. skilled um but yeah you need to have a little bit of that in you um but then obviously we we train train as well yeah no that's that's really helpful to understand because if people are looking at a career they sometimes you don't always think of the fact that you know with printing you might actually need really good manual skills to be able to finish that off to make it look perfect yeah. Um, I struggle with cutting in a straight line, so I'm totally annoyed. <laughs> I'd be rubbish. I'd be great in your office department, but not so much. But, um, I'm wondering as well, like, 
and so I'm thinking about like the office side of things and the customer service side it seems to me that your admin people do quite a lot of varied work as well that actually and I think that's one of the benefits I know from having talked to employers that being in a smaller organization you tend to get to do a lot of different things within your role and it seems to me that you maybe need you know sort of slightly different skills from similar but like from bringing on board a new customer to chasing up a customer for a payment you maybe need sort of slightly different um yeah. sort of like skill set there but it seems to me that across the board they probably need quite good attention to detail as well in terms yeah, of like that, checking information and that's very important um and we we try to encourage and create an environment where um if somebody spots something which doesn't quite look right um to flag it with us doesn't matter how far that is down the schedule yeah. that could be after three weeks of us working on it uh, we'd still much rather that be noticed and flagged and we can then try and rectify it or start again if needed um, rather than the customer get it and they realize um, but yeah that, that goes right through from the start um, we do try and encourage that um, and give people the confidence to be able to do that as well yeah Oh, no, that's really brilliant. And that kind of feeling that everybody's voice matters, I think, creates a really sort of good team culture. I was wondering if, because job descriptions always feel so flat, would you talk us through like a kind of like a, a, a day in the life of, say, like one of your customer service admin guys, what might what might they do for their day? What what might sort of activities might they do? OK. Um, Come so, in, get a cup of tea, maybe. And... Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so there'll be communication now comes to us in so many different forms we still have a lot of phone calls so there is a lot of phone answering um, some of which will be uh, fresh inquiries you know, which will need to be passed for estimating um, others may be customers ringing for an update on when we expect completion of their job um, things like that so there's that side of things which is essentially fresh and fresh communication with the customers yeah. um, then following on from that, there is estimate raising, um, right. which is a costing and we cost every every job bespoke. Um, we don't have templates for business cards, for wow. example. Yeah. Um, so that, that there's a lot of that. That's a, a big portion of the day because um, wow. every, every single job that goes through the building needs to have an estimate raised in our customer management software. Um, and it's important that that is correct because that will give instructions to everybody else as the job progresses through yeah um and then yeah so then there's involved in that there's then the scheduling of what's going to be on what press on what day wow. yeah um, it's almost a bit of logistics almost isn't it oh there is yes indeed yeah um and then yeah th then there's the chasing if something's been on proof for a few days longer than we'd have expected it's just dropping a line to a customer and just saying you are aware that we're waiting to hear from you on this um that communication also if there is any um customer queries or complaints mm. or things like that we do need to be able to react to that um we don't have too many thankfully um but w when it happens it's how you deal with that um, yeah goes a big way you can often come out with a better relationship with somebody if you deal with something going wrong in a good way you can come out with a better relationship than if it hadn't happened really bizarrely yeah. um so yeah and then what else was involved also then there's booking in of deliveries so couriers um we have couriers coming to us every day so it's booking those in checking that things are going to the right places um and also any goods coming in so there's accepting of raw product coming in yeah. for us to print on um things like that so that, that's probably the admin side main wow. tasks i'd guess so that is going to suit somebody in my head sort of hearing that that's going to suit somebody who's a real people person because you're going to have lots of different interactions with lots of different types of people from delivery drivers to customers to your colleagues to new customers and you've got to be able to deal with variety and but still have that attention to detail and be able to organize yourself what sort of skills like on the design side you know perhaps what what might might a designer's day look like um that's that's a bit more tricky to answer um because that really is very varied it can be you can have days where they're doing 
mm, nothing but checking somebody's supplied files and right. sending things to the press. Um, but then you can also go days and days when you're working on a big brochure design, for example, or a big newsletter layout. Um, so that that really does vary um, and there isn't always a balance to it. Um, but you do get to turn your hand to lots of different things. Yeah. Um, so again, there's flexibility needed yeah. there. Um, and yeah, so that is, it's keeping the creativity um, and that attention to detail, even if it you can be doing a bit monotonous yeah. work, which is not an easy thing. Yeah, actually. Absolutely, because you've got to balance out being able to get through, I guess, similar tasks, but with different material all the yes. time. Uh, that's yeah. really interesting. And then from a printing perspective, if you're on the print floor, you coming in, um, you may be getting your cup of tea, but having it somewhere else, but, <laughs> but you, I guess you're going to be into that noisy environment. I guess, you're, are you standing up a lot of the day, moving around, operating machines? Yes, yeah, it is most of the day. Um, and there's, well... We, yeah, without exception, you would be on in whichever print direction you go. Um, so Lytho, because you're dealing with longer runs, um, you're setting your machine up and then you're minding it um, for a lot longer. Whereas digital, the runs are quite short. So you'll yeah. be constantly loading a paper, unloading a paper. Right, what's the next job need? Um, so that, again, that the end product is similar to a lot of to the layman, really. Um, but the how the day is spent when you're doing those is quite different between the yeah. two um yeah which is again keeps interesting and absolutely there just seems to be so much variety in the organization i think that's fascinating and i think gives a really good insight into how small businesses actually often have more happening in some ways you know more to engage with in, in roles i guess probably my last thing danny just to ask you is we've asked everybody this but if you were going to go back and have a chat to your younger self starting off in your career what piece of advice would you give yourself what would you tell young Danny that's a good question um I think the make sure that you keep the ability to remain positive um that that is absolutely critical um as in any job you do have challenge and challenging times is a strange industry to be in print really because we've built quite a relaxed team friendly atmosphere but in hand in hand with that it's quite a high intensity there's yeah. constant deadlines there's constant um things need to be done or things not quite right you need to come back and change them again um so it is intense it's very intense um within a relaxed team environment so trying to keep that positive attitude um is really important because it you do feed you do feed off each other so if you've got got a good core of people who are always positive then the atmosphere everywhere is good um so i think i think that's crucial really brilliant well staying positive that's a brilliant note to end on danny thank you so much for your time today it's been great to meet you thank you very much and you